Hi guys, welcome back. So this is a reading update. Uh, I finished quite a few books, so I wanted to get you all caught up on kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, I listened to The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. Um, this is a book that it definitely had sort of a Agatha Christie kind of feel to it in terms of the setting and the characters, the multiple characters. We started out with uh, a man in a dinner jacket uh, waking up in the middle of the woods wondering how he got there, uh, why the name Anna is, is on his lips. And then he sees a woman kind of running through the woods, thinking she's Anna, calls off after her. Uh, and then kind of comes to realize he doesn't know who he is. He has complete amnesia, doesn't know how he got there, where he is, who this woman Anna is anyway. And uh, we have this bizarre mystery that sort of slowly starts to unfold. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail of it for those of you who might be interested in reading this or haven't yet read it. Uh, because there is an underlying twist to this sort of typical Agatha Christie-like mystery. Um, there is a murder that's going to take place, um, and he has to sort of, um, solve it. It's, it's, it's difficult to explain because it's this odd, weird twist, um, with his character and all the other characters within the book. Uh, there was times I found myself very confused as to who was who, and what was kind of going on within the story. Um, I did like the, the individual characters. I thought they were all kind of really well developed in their own personalities, with the exception of the women within the book. I felt that there were like kind of three main women characters that, that didn't really have much depth to them, including Evelyn Hardcastle. Um, and, and I felt that was sort of lacking within the book. But there was intrigue within it. Um, that other twist I thought was a really neat aspect to it. Again, I don't want to go into details as to what that twist was. And I thought that was going to be really cool. Um, but in the end, like I said, it, it got overly confusing with the, the constant amount of characters and what happens with the characters because of this plot twist. Also, I felt there were some plot holes left because of it. Um, and yeah, in the end, I just wanted to like it so much more than I ended up liking it. Uh, you know, disliking it. I think I get like two stars on Goodreads. Uh, so overall, in the end, I was disappointed. It, it, it had such potential to it, but in the end, it kind of failed to meet my expectations of what I thought was going to happen with the story. It just, it just got too weird. So I don't have much more to say about that one. Uh, the next one I read, um, actually audiobook version of it, uh, was Melmoth uh, by Sarah Perry. Now, I previously read The Essex Serpent uh, last year. I was a little late to the party on that one. And that was one of my favorite books of the year. Uh, so I was really looking forward to this one, too. Um, this one, didn't like it quite as much as The Essex Serpent, but still, uh, I really did enjoy it a lot. It, it has a, that gothic kind of horror feel to it. Um, the setting is in Prague. Uh, it's just very dark. It's about this woman, Melmoth the Witness, she's referred to. And she's a woman kind of doomed to roam the earth, uh, witnessing all the evil acts of the human race. Uh, you come to learn why she's doomed later on in the story, so I won't get into the details about that. Our main character is a woman by, by the name of Helen Franklin. She left England some years ago, moved to Prague uh, to work as a translator. Um, she is a sad little woman. Uh, she is troubled by something that she did in her past, something she feels extreme guilt for and she's sort of punishing herself, um, eating very little, wearing raggedy clothes, just not really caring about herself or caring for herself. Uh, she meets um, two people who should be friends, uh, Carol, uh, Carol rather, and Thea, uh, his, I think I forgot, I forgot they were married or not. Uh, but anyway, Carol, uh, Carol, I keep wanting to say Carol, Carol is uh, studying some, some paperwork, some files from a, a man named Joseph Hoffman, a man he had met, and uh, within these papers, suddenly he sees something that terrifies him. Um, writings about this character named Melmoth. And shortly after he shares this with Helen, he disappears. And he ends up leaving the papers to Helen. And she starts reading, uh, reading up about uh, Joseph Hoffman and his backstory. And we start getting these stories within stories about various encounters about this with this mysterious robed woman, long black hair, by the name of Melmoth. And she's always like there at these horrible times, and and her coming is sort of um, you hear like singing in the background, and these creepy blue-eyed birds called jackdaws um, arrive, and and the sounds they make this how and why, why 
why it's like repeated um almost in a weird creepy sing songness um as if they're they're kind of i don't know questioning the the people that that did these evil evil acts but she she seems to be always watching or looking in the background and Helen starts to think that perhaps she's been followed that she, that that Melmoth is coming for her and the stories were creepy um the setting is creepy everything is like a dark dark feel to it uh, the narration of it was odd at times it, it it conveyed that that eerie feel to it but also it was at times very sing-song like she would talk like this and then they would do that and then I, sometimes I found it irritating and I wanted to speed it up but then I felt if I sped it up it wouldn't fit the rhythm of the book I, I don't know I, I I wonder if my feelings for it would have been a little different having re reading a physical copy rather than listening to the audio book of it uh, but overall I was I was intrigued at times I got a little confused with the multitude of stories within the book um, but Helen's story itself uh, when it's revealed about her past and what she did and um, yeah I thought that that was really really good too um, really good wrap-up to the book overall I really did enjoy it like I said I, I'm not too sure about the narration I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hit or miss with it so uh, Maybe just pick up a physical copy of it instead. Uh, what else did I finish? Oh, I finished Pride and Prejudice. Uh, I did just uh, film a, a, a wrap-up of that, uh, so that'll probably be posting before you see this, so you can see what my thoughts of the book overall were in that video, so I won't go into detail in there. For March Mystery Madness, I only got around to reading one mystery because I was kind of trying to catch up on various things. I would have liked to have just been... a an entire mystery read for that month. Um, technically, the Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle was a mystery, but I, I started that really the previous month and just finished it at the beginning. So I didn't really read it through the course of, of March. I, the problem with, with mysteries is I don't le like to read more than one mystery at a time. I don't know if you guys are like that. Uh, I do read multiple books, but I like them in different genres. Because with mysteries, you kind of have to focus a bit more uh, and it would get too jumbled with two kind of things going at the same time like that so I like to keep my mystery separate so I didn't get a chance to read a physical copy more than just the one which was this one here this is um, Murder in the Mystery Suite uh, book one in the Book Retreat Mystery Series by Ellery Adams uh, this is a set in like rural West Virginia and um, it's at a storybook resort called Storyton Hall and it is owned by the aunt and uncle of Jane Stewart uh, it's it's a quaint little place. Um, it's it's got a definitely a bookish feel to it. I love the names of the rooms. Uh, they're referred to as the Jane Austen Parlor, the Ian Fleming Lounge, the Isaac Dennison Safari Room, the Daphne du Maurier Mooring Room, a Beatrix Potter Playroom, etc., etc. Um, and they do pretty good business. But Jane is trying to find a way to increase the bookings, and she comes up with an idea to do this. Um, Murder and Mayhem Week, where they'll have um, kind of a costume ball. You dress up as your favorite detective. Um, there'll be a, a crime you have to solve. There'll be a treasure hunt kind of thing. Uh, so all sorts of things that she comes up with this uh, this idea. And unfortunately, the Murder and Mayhem Week does turn deadly when um, one of the guests who um, is the winner of one of the... Um, treasure hunts. He wins a, um, a kind of a rare novel uh, and he ends up turning up dead uh, and the book ends up missing. So uh, there's some confusion with the book that was given away. Uh, there were two copies of it and belonging to her aunt and her aunt accidentally gave away the wrong book and she's freaking out. They've got to get this book back for, for whatever reason. Now it's a, it's a pretty pretty intriguing mystery within it but then there's this whole other twist again another weird twist to um, Jane's aunt and uncle and storybook hall um, story tin hall rather uh, and she comes to learn this secret and become the inheritor of it because of her family and their history and it's it's weird it took the book from kind of a cozy setting to a little bit more professional setting it's it's weird I, I, I kind of didn't like that aspect of it um, 
I, I prefer just staying cozy, just average people. And But there was a whole other thing you learn about, like, the background of her family and the staff working for her that she doesn't even know, but it's revealed to her. And I don't know if I like that aspect too much of it. Uh, I think because of that, I probably will not continue with the series. Um, the overall mystery was okay. Uh, I think I was I was a bit disappointed in the overall wrap of it and, and the actual murder and their motives and all that. So I, I, it's a shame because I like Jane. I liked I liked her aunt and uncle. Um, her aunt's quite a character. Uh, Jane is a, a widow with two young children, Fitz and Hem, short for Fitzgerald and Hemingway. Yes, everything's very bookish uh, themed in here, and and um, the guests get to roam around this place, and there's libraries everywhere, everything filled with books. They can take books and, you know, read them in their rooms and stuff. I like the whole setting. I like those characters, but then again, I just wasn't overall satisfied with the mystery. I was a bit disappointed, and I, I didn't like that, that, like I said, that extra twist to the background and stuff, so... I'll probably be giving the rest of the series in this. Um, See, so yeah, I think apart from that, uh, it's just kind of going on to what I'm currently reading. Um, I am currently listening an audiobook to The Mangle Street Murders by M.R.C. Cassasian. Uh, this one I just kind of stumbled across. It's um, number one in the Gower Street uh, detective series. It's set in 1882 in London, and we meet Sidney Grice. He is London's first famous personal detective. <laughs> Not private detective, personal detective. He's rather a gruff character, um, very exacting in, in, in everything um, in terms of when his tea is and uh, um, the way you phrase things, you know. Everything's got to be grammatically correct. He's, he's, he's a bit annoying um, of a character and uh, somehow he, I forgot how, but he lost one of his eyes and it doesn't fit very well and every once in a while it pops out. <laughs> it's kind of gross. Uh, but anyway, um, at the beginning of the story, um, he is awaiting his ward, March Middleton, who's coming to live with him. He was friends with March's parents and knew them very well. Uh, March never met her mother. She died at childbirth. And her father having recently died, um, uh, Sidney feels like he owes him um, a debt of gratitude for something in the past. But he's very hesitant to talk about her parent. Uh, she wants to know more about her mother. Well, he never, she never really got to meet. Uh, but he says, never ask me about them. Never, you know, doesn't want to talk about them. So I'm kind of curious as to why that is. We don't, we don't quite know. Uh, but anyway, uh, March is sort of determined to kind of assist Sidney um, uh, in his cases, in his next case, uh, but he feels women are too feeble and and uh, aren't going to be able to help. But it comes to realize that she is actually rather useful in in this upcoming case of a murder. Uh, when his, uh, as it's described in Goodreads, his encyclopedic brain fails him, uh, and it's it's set right around the time, uh, just slightly after the Jack the Ripper murders. So you know, London's still kind of on edge and everything, and uh, this grisly murder kind of happens, and uh, so far I'm enjoying it. Uh, there's some comedic elements to it, particularly with his eye constantly popping out, and her her banter back and forth with him. She's she is definitely uh, going to be a match for him, I think, so I'm interested to see how, how this continues and whether I'll continue with the series, but I am liking the audio um, narration of it. And the other book I'm reading is, I'm finishing up uh, the Palliser novels. This is a book two uh, Phineas Finn, I had set this aside some time ago, um, what, the month before? Yeah, the month before I'd set it aside uh, for for the third book in the series to keep up with the readathon. so I'm kind of backtracking now and I had to kind of reacquaint myself with this particular character and uh, so I'm kind of right there, I'm hoping to finish it out by the end of the week, fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm currently reading and what I have read over this week, uh, so over this week, over this, you know, since the last update. <laughs> Uh, so what are you guys reading? Anything good? Have you read any of these? Um, yeah, let me know. Uh, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.